out of nowhere, Chris Stapps Porzingis is a Boston Celtic. Um, that is a, a honestly unexpected trade. I don't think I really saw that one coming, to be honest with you. I like the fit a lot for Boston, obviously being a team that lives and dies by the three. Why not get a seven foot three guy who can space the floor and knock down right. threes at a very, very high clip. Mm -hmm. um, and you're able to still keep, uh, you know, Robert Williams in this deal. Um, and so I, I really like that. You could run both of them on the court at the same time. I mean, it's, spacing is not going to be an issue there. Gives you options to potentially stagger their minutes too, if you would like. Because we know we've seen Robert Williams come come down with some injuries here in the past two seasons, so um, that may additionally help out as well. But yeah, what are your thoughts about this initial trade? Um, obviously, with Chris Porzingis now going to Boston, um, and them continuing to try to to build this core out around both the Jays and, and hopefully try to get back to the finals. I personally love this pit, this uh this trade. Um, mm -hmm. if I'm a Celtics fan, I'm I'm really really happy. Like you said, I think Porzingis is a great fit with them. I think, like you said, it plays into their we're gonna shoot a lot of threes mentality, but it also gives them versatility as a big man, someone who could, mm -hmm. if need be, he can score in the post a little bit. He can hit those mid range shots. You can go up against the Miami Heat in that zone. You got somebody who can sit in that middle and actually create yeah. for himself. So. Um, like I said, still he can give you a good offense and then still be a great rim protector. You can run both of them, him and Robert Williams, and then no one scoring in the paint. The paint would be on lock. But still, he, he's just a very versatile big man, and I, I like that fit for them a lot. If they want to go, not even – if they want to go five out, they could play him at the five, and then they could run a, a lineup of all shooters like they do with Al Horford. So it helps them in that aspect. Al Horford's getting a little bit older, so it helps them with that. I just think it's – it makes them a lot more like Brass even said they wanted to be more balanced. They wanted to have a more of a balanced roster. And I think that's exactly what they did. Um, and I like it because of the position they're in. I like it because to go to the finals, you're gonna have to go against who? Joel Embiid and the 76ers. You're gonna go have to go against Giannis and the Bucks. If you make it to the finals, if you go against the Nuggets, you have more big man depth. If you go against, I don't know, the Lakers with Anthony Davis, just people the the league has a lot of great big men. So I feel like this helps them out a lot in that aspect. And listen, I don't know if I don't know if this is considered somewhat of a hot take. I think they're the best team on paper in the league. I think they're better. Mm. Than Nuggets. Wow. I, on paper, on, I'm just saying I think they're better than Nuggets because okay. the Nuggets are going to lose Bruce Brown. Mm -hmm. the, the, he's going to go. He's going to go get a bag somewhere. I think they didn't lose much. Like they lost Marcus Smart, obviously. Who is who is a big loss? But you have Derek White who can fill in. You have Derek White who can yeah. play elite, elite perimeter defense. You have more big man versatility. If Brogdon can stay healthy, now obviously health is a concern. So if Brogdon can stay healthy and Porzingis can stay healthy, then you know I feel like that they're the best team on paper. But there's a lot of things that factor into it. I'm not saying they're going to win the title, but there's, obviously there's a lot of things that factor into it. Health is one of those things. Just overall fit in general, because on paper a lot of things could look great, and then once you get into the season, you get yeah. to the playoffs, and things could look completely different. So I'm not saying they're going to win the, the the title. But me personally, I think on paper that they're the best team in the league. Interesting. Interesting. I like to fit a lot. I don't know if I can go that far and say I think they're the best on paper. But I, all the things that you said in terms of his ability to bring additional versatility and balance to their offense, another guy who um, can space the floor, but also a guy who can create his own shot different ways, big enough but still skilled enough to take bigs off their dribble, like you said, can score out of the post. I also think he's an underrated shot blocker, obviously, at his size. Um, is, a, is a good rim protector, not necessarily the greatest post defender, um, but in terms of just strictly erasing shots at the rim, um, one of the better players in the league for that. So, yeah, I think it provides another versatile asset on their offensive side of the ball. Still would love to see them bring in a more traditional point guard, um, but – I think it it definitely improves their roster. Um, the, the full details of the trade I haven't pulled up here. Obviously, again, like we said, the Celtics getting Porzingis. They also got the number 25 pick in this year's draft, um, which I don't remember who they took off the top of my head. I think they took – That was crazy, too, the fact that they got two first-round picks and Porzingis. Yeah, they took uh, Marcus Sasser um, from Houston. 
Um, scrappy point guard. So fits the bill for them. And they got another first round pick, which is crazy, right? Like they got Porzingis and got two first out of it, which is insane. Obviously, both coming from the Grizzlies in this deal, a three-team deal, because the Grizzlies do get Marcus <clears throat> Smart, the heart and soul of the Boston Celtics team. Um, he actually, I didn't know this, I think him and Bead and Jokic were still the only teams from that draft class, or the only players from that year's draft class that were still with the team that drafted them. Obviously, Jokic and Embiid for obvious reasons, but um, Marcus Smart, been with the Celtics for, was that almost – eight, nine years at that point. Um, yeah. So tough. I know for Celtics fans to see Marcus Smart go, he was one of the most loved players on that roster. Um, but he now goes into a Grizzlies team who at the beginning of, or not even at the beginning, at the end of their season in the playoffs, that they would not be bringing Dylan Brooks back under any circumstances. Uh, so bringing a guy who, um, can kind of fill that void in terms of perimeter defense, you know, former defensive player of the year. I think his defense definitely took a step back this year, um, mm -hmm. was not the best defender on his team this season, arguably might not have even been a top two or three defender on the Celtics this past season. Not to say that he's, you know, a bad defender by any means. Still is a very good defender in this league. Um, and could see him, you know, re-elevate that level of play there um, in Memphis. I'm, I'm a little interested with the fit there with um, – when Ja gets out of that 25 game suspension with Ja and Desmond Bain and Marcus Smart um, all playing at the same time, you're giving up a lot of size That's there. Small. But we do know Marcus Smart, man, he tries to guard centers. He does not he shy does. away from <laughs> any contact, any size. It does not matter to him. So um, they may just be banking on his, his heart and his scrappiness to, to kind of fill some of those gaps there. Um, but even that aside, this gives them a point guard for that first 25-game stretch of the season. Um, and then, obviously, once Ja does come back, then, you know, they'll probably do some mix and matching, uh, maybe stagger their minutes potentially. But I'm pretty sure all three of them will start. They'll just – they'll figure it out. Um, yeah. And then on the Wizards side of things, obviously, after giving up Porzingis, they do get back Tyus Jones um, from the Grizz Grizzlies, which I really like Tyus Jones – is has been the best backup point guard in the league for two, three seasons now, has an absurd assist to turnover ratio, just makes right decisions with the basketball all the time. Very smart player, um, which is all you can ask for from like if that is what you're getting out of your starting point guard, that is a win, right? You have a point guard that makes good decisions, he doesn't turn the ball over, gets his guys going, and can still score when needed to. Um, so he's now going to move into a position where he can be a starting point guard in the league and really, you know, kind of spread his wings and show the league what he can really do with, you know, 30, 35 minutes a night. They get Danilo Gallinari from the Celtics, who didn't even get to play a single minute, I think, in a Celtics uniform, which is tough because I think he grew up a Celtics fan and it was like a Dang. lifelong dream for him to finally be a Boston Celtic. Dang. Tears his ACL before the season starts, doesn't ever get to play and then gets traded. <laughs> um, very it's tough business. for him. Yeah, <laughs> very very tough. Uh, Mike Muscala also going to the Wizards in this trade as well, um, and then a second round pick from the Celtics. So definitely, I think Celtics is a great deal. Grizzlies is a great. Really, honestly, is a great deal. I think for everyone involved. Obviously, if you're the Wizards, weird that you trade the best player in this deal and don't get a first round pick back when the Celtics get the best player and two first-round picks. Yeah. Um, so if I had to pick, obviously, they would be the winners. Just you get the best player and the draft capital. It's kind of crazy. Um, but I, I like this for everybody involved, right? It makes sense for everyone here. The Celtics get the versatility and the big. Um, Grizzlies get a gritty guy. Going back to those grit and grind days, someone that fits their mentality, um, gives them additional point guard help while Josh ja suspended, and then additional – uh, help on the perimeter on the defensive side of the ball with Dylan Brooks being out and the Wizards um, get a point guard to help them launch off their rebuild um, who can help give that offense some structure and not just let Jordan Poole dribble the ball like crazy for 20 seconds and chuck a 35 foot three so um, mm -hmm. I, yeah I really like this for everybody involved yeah um, for the Grizzlies side of it I already talked about how I feel about the Celtics side of it for the Grizzlies side of it um, 
I think it helps them too off the court because I feel like they need a little bit more leadership in that locker room. I feel like that team is a little is very not a little bit. They're very they were very immature. They obviously with the Josh stuff. Obviously, I just feel like the whole team, the whole culture in general, mm-hmm. can use a grown up in there. Can use a veteran. Can use a leader and someone who's been in the playoffs. Someone who's been deep in the playoffs multiple times. Someone who's played alongside stars so he can work with the egos. Someone who's been to the finals, even though he hasn't won. He's been to the finals. So I feel like off the court. Um, it's a really big, really big help, and I probably I feel like he'll be uh, have a great impact on those young guys there on the court. Yeah, I, I'm a little con- I'm a little concerned about how they would all fit together once Ja comes back, because you know, like you said, those are three small guys and Bane, Ja, mm-hmm. and Marcus Smart. Yeah, he can he plays bigger than what he is, but at the end of the day, he's still what is he six five ish? Marcus Smart, like I don't Marcus Smart. No, he's, he's like tall. I know he's like six. Marcus Smart's like what six three, six four? Not think Marcus about it. Smart is. Where's basketball reference at? Marcus Smart six three, yeah. Okay, yeah, six three. So I mean, that's a very, if he's they're all starting together, that's a very very small team or small perimeter. But I mean, who knows? They can make it work, and then we'll see. But from the Wizards side of it, it's just a little bit tough because a Porzingis had a player option, so you could have just opted out. You could have lost him for nothing. So you're right. kind of stuck. The fact that you even got anything. I guess you can look at it as a win. Mm-hmm. Like I understand you didn't get any first round picks, but your your hands were kind of tied. So, but as far as the Wizards, I'm actually um I'm curious to see what this new regime does because uh all these moves are then they get I believe they got like a new GM, and yeah. all these moves are under this new GM. And the first thing he's doing is completely erasing all of the mistakes of the previous <laughs> uh, the yeah. previous regime over there. So from that aspect, I'm excited to see what their future looks like because, like you said, he's just. He didn't really have a lot to work with. You got Bradley Bill with a no trade clause and a terrible contract. You got Przingis with a player option. You got Kuzma with a player option. So, the fact that you got anything from those guys, I guess you could look at it as a win. And they did get a lot of second round picks through this whole process. They got like <laughs> was like six second round picks. Yeah, like and like some swaps. Like they they got a lot of stuff for having basically no leverage in any mm-hmm. of these deals that they made. So. Um, from that aspect, I'm excited to see them starting their rebuild. I'm excited to see them seem like they're they seem like they're finally going to be a serious organization for once with this new regime. So, I'm, I'm excited to see what the future holds. Yeah, I think Will Dawkins is the new new general manager there in uh, Washington, and he got permission from the the owner and the team president to like the green light to do whatever he wants. If he wants to start the rebuild, start the rebuild. And he very, very quickly, like, I think he got the job in the beginning of June and <laughs> we're about almost to the end of the month and he's blown it up entirely, which is mm-hmm. the right thing to do. The Wizards have been living in that middle ground for ever since John Wall left. They've been living in that, that middle ground area, which is not where you want to be as a franchise. So I like the decision to trade away Bill and Porzingis and just fully, fully go young. Um, we got to bring up this trade almost didn't happen, right? Like it started. Oh, with yeah. What had been reported by Shams and Woj and, um, you know, multiple media sources that it was going to be a three-team deal um, with the, the Wizards, the Celtics, and the Clippers were actually going to get Brogdon in this deal. Um, and so Boston was going to be able to keep Marcus Smart and still bring in Porzingis. The Clippers, I think, ended up backing out because of some – Medical questions with Brogdon. Um, They are concerned about his current injury status and that, you know, gave them some hesitancy. And so they back out of the deal and the the Wizards were up against the clock. Like you said, with Porzingis' player option, that had to be opted in by midnight that day or he Mm -hmm. becomes a free agent. And so they were on a very, very tight window to get it done. And they got it done with, I think, like 10 or 15 minutes to spare before midnight Eastern time, um, which – I'm sure it was a very, very tough decision for them to have to include Marcus Smart at that point, but I believe they had to just to make the money work from that point because Providence contract no longer would have been on the table to be moved. So um, hard, to, hard to see a guy like that go, I know, for the, the Celtics fan base, but um, like I said, I really like this move for, for everyone involved. 